Hello everybody, welcome to my latest video Being Brave Against an International Master My name is Cengiz Hasman from Cyprus and my opponent today is International Master Vladimir Hamitevici from Moldova and he did become a Grandmaster later on when we played, his ELO was 2437 and this game was played in the London League team competition. And I played my traditional D4 and if I had played D5, we could have had the modern Benoni well, or even the Czech Benoni um, or the Benko Gambit as popular openings. However, I didn't play d5. I actually took, and this is not really the best variation. Um, however, it we get out of theory quite quickly, and I did actually give up this um, opening because I did lose to a 21 on the player, but in this game it worked out okay for me. So e6, threaten the bishops threatening c5, and this is really why this um, opening isn't so good because it helps develop the bishop in one move. So both sides are developing and I play this b4 move, I'm expanding on the queen side. So I, I've, I've castled and my um, opponent has got this is a hedgehog formation. So um, it, it might look passive at, the, in, at first, but um, there are some good ideas um, for black. Um, it's quite easy to play and solid. So um, later on, I mean, I, I would have probably, after studying this, I would have probably, I might have gone for this A4, A5 idea, but at the time I didn't know it. Um, we all learn. So what, what I did play wasn't so bad actually, just um, developing pieces. And this, my opponent's maneuver is quite good um, with the queen to go to uh, a8, um, getting some extra firepower on this diagonal. So I go for an exchange of bishops. And some maneuvering going on. Not many pieces being swapped at the moment. And now um, I do aim at this um, e6 spot, um, and some tactics could and did occur. So black does have to be careful about this e6 um, pawn because white. Um, can, can think about sacrificing um, a knight for two pawns and maybe getting an exchange. So um, this is why black actually got out of that. And c5. Um, now the queen is attacking this e6 pawn. So some important tactics uh, about to happen. Now you can pause the video if you like, if you'd like to try and guess my move, what I played. And as the title of the video suggests, I played this move, this brave move of giving up the knight for two pawns. In actual fact, um, I, I got three pawns. So I get this other, uh, because I, I after the queen moved, um, 
it's not defending g at e5 anymore so i i mean my knight on e6 is, is attacked so i i sacrifice it that temporarily go two pieces down but then i just get the other piece back and if we assess the situation i have got six pawns a bishop and my opponent has got three pawns and a knight and all the other pieces we've got a queen each and two rooks each so um decent chances um in the end game and these pawns if they become past pawns um can even even create winning chances for white Yes, so um, I'm developing this rook. Um, I'm actually threatening rook g4 because there's a pin on this. And in all honesty, the computer does like um, black a bit more, but um, it's not enough to win. So I'm just exchanging and the black king is a bit vulnerable. So some more exchanges occur. So I protect my c5 pawn and attack the a5 pawn and it's defended by the bishop. And now I take this pawn off a black square so the bishop on d8 uh, cannot attack it. And now it's time to push those kingside pawns a bit, expand on the kingside. And I would like to uh, mention that um, this is um, not, uh, there isn't, is, there isn't that, that much time for both players. Um, it was 75 minutes each for 30 moves and then an extra 15 um, minutes um, added on. So not a rapid game, but not um, a, a comp you know, totally um, classical game. Uh, either with like 90 minutes plus 30 second increments, no increments in this game. So yes, as, as I mentioned, it's time to push those uh, pawns on the king side, create some past pawns. And the black rook now wants to infiltrate my uh, position. So I have to be careful. Uh, F4 as from white would be a big mistake because the king could come and then uh, rook h2 and then this e3 pawn will be go dropping so white does have to make some uh, important decisions he has to be careful i played here in anticipation of this rook h2 move so my king can come up and now black wants to check me um over here he can win this a pawn so um I do need to be care I did need to be careful and here these white pawns go so two connected white oh, white pawns on the king side and now the rook is attacking the bishop and I push this g pawn to g6 now my opponent plays rook b8 wanting to exchange off the rooks and here you can pause the video and find the winning the only clear winning chance of the game unfortunately uh, i did not play this move so see if you can do um, better than me so pause the video please if you would like to try and find the winning idea. Okay, um, I played the natural looking F5 move, which doesn't win. The correct move was Rook E8. And this, if, the, if this pawn is attacked, we still push it and it's queening so 
black can't stop it so he i mean he has to he has to give up the bishop on e7 and take that dangerous g pawn and now this d5 pawn will fall so once the king moves away and um i mean just somewhere like this white ends up being three pawns against one pawn and should convert into a win. However, unfortunately for me, I played the, this natural looking f5 move, trying to advance them together. And some checks. Now I exchanged. And we enter this four against two pawn ending, where I'm with black being a bishop up, but some dangerous pawns. and simplifying the position in this type of position if i, I take this if i can swap off this b pawn um, i can't lose um but it's not enough for either side to win and we end up having a draw so if, if black didn't have this b4 pawn, then I would be winning. The three um, uh, past white pawns would be um, overwhelming. But um, my king can't really um, go, go and attack this bishop because this b pawn would then uh, become a queen. So um, anyway, um, both players shook hands on a draw. And um, I would like to thank you for watching. Bye-bye.